doctor in South Korea, and uh, now he is holding a postdoctoral research in biomedical and translational medicine, uh, as well as medical research in Jakarta, New York. So, and also to his credit, he has published a good number of publication in the um, national and international journals. He has also he has won a lot of awards to his um, academic credit. So his barata is uh, keep on going with his few words. I introduce the speaker to the audience. So over to Dr. Jagdish. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Jagdish Chandrabhu for Jindran. Uh, I did my Bachelor of Pharmacy and Master of Pharmacy in India. Then I moved to Korea for my PhD. Then after I, I came here for my postdoc uh, in U.S. So uh, I have been working with nanomaterials. That's my major interest. And majorly, uh, I'm doing research on nanomedicine, uh, trying to deliver therapeutics, particularly small molecules, gene, and uh, RNAs, and so on. But uh, recently, uh, we got an opportunity to work with you know the autoimmune diseases, particularly systemic lupus erythromatous. So I am trying to explore further in this area, and it is more related to the Department of Zoology. That's why I pick up this topic uh, to present or uh, uh, to discuss with everyone. Shall I start, sir? Hello. 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 Yes, sir, please carry on. Yes, sir, but uh, the audios are low. frequently, uh, you know, I'm losing the signal. Hello. Sir, please carry on. Please carry on yourself. Yeah, yes. Uh, the, yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, this topic is today, uh, I'm going to present humanized my mouse model for autoimmune diseases, particularly systemic lupus erythromatous. I will explain what, uh, what, what is the disease and what is the pathogenesis of this disease. So uh, first, what is humanized mice model? You, everyone familiar with mouse models um, in the case of, you know, the nude mice and uh, immunocompetent mice. It's quite familiar with most of diseases. But in the case of humanized my, mouse model is the completely uh, new term. Um, there is few researchers only aware of this uh, humanized mouse model. The reason is uh, mouse uh, genetics and immune system function completely different from human 
uh, immune system as well as genetics. So to mitigate this issue, people are come up with their own idea like injecting of uh, hematopoietic stem cells or um, PBMC to the mouse, the human cells to the mouse or human tissue to the mouse. By the way, we can convert the mouse into the humanized form. That's, I wrote it here clearly. The humanized mouse model is immunocompetent mouse expressing human genes such as HLA or we can um, implant the cells such as hematopoietic stem cells or lymphoid cells, um, PBMC, to the immunodeficient, immun immunodeficient mouse model. Uh, that's how we can create a humanized mouse model. These mouse are commercially available. Uh, mm -hmm. We can order it from, uh, you know, uh, Jackson Laboratory and uh, other and so on. So there is three methods to develop a humanized mouse model. The first one is uh, injecting human PBMC to the severe combined immunodeficiency deficiency mice. Uh, that's the one thing. Or other another method is injection of hematopoietic stem cell to the uh, SCID mice. And the third one is we can implant the liver and thymus of fetus tissue to the mouse. So there is three mice currently available. The fourth one recently investigated. So one is um, PBL seed mice and SRC seed mice and the BLT. BLT is nothing but bone marrow liver uh, and thymus mice. So here in this picture, you can clearly see various forms uh, of uh, humanized mice development. So the first one, um, these cells, particularly human peripheral blood leukocytes, can be isolated from fetus. Then that will be implanted into the renal capsule, or we can inject it into the IV. And the similar manner, we can you know isolate the bone marrow derived hematopoietic stem cell or umbilical cord derived hematopoietic stem cell or fetal liver derived hematopoietic stem cell, then we can implant into the, you know, the uh, pups. Then after this pups grows as a mice, that, that's called as a humanized mice. And the fourth one is, as I said, the BLT model. The BLT model, the human fetal liver and human fetal thymus mince together and they implant into the uh, mice uh, renal capsule and along with uh, you know the hsc cells so this is going to be a blt for the t cell development and otherwise uh, the severe combined immunodeficiency mice humanized mice development we can use the both tissue implantation without you know hsc cells so this diagram explains the overall method and the uh, method of injection into the pups so you can see the facial veins we can use intracardiac method we can inject the these cells or intrahepatic uh, via we can inject the hematopoietic stem cells to the pups and similarly we can implant into the renal capsules of fetal liver or thymus fragments um, the same case fetal liver and thymus fragments implantation along with hematopoietic stem cell injection via the intravenous so overall, these three methods help us to develop humanized mouse model, and I will explain further. So before implantation, because it's a, a different source, so first we need to <clears throat> radiate, irradiate the mice with you know the radiations like 250C uh, GY, or otherwise in the case of pops, it will be 100 GY. Then we implant uh, CD34, which is hematopoietic stem cell. Uh, isolated from umbilical cord blood or fetal liver and bone marrow and mo uh, and so on. Or we can mobilize these cells in the human by using uh, GCSF and we can isolate the cells and implant into the mice model. So by implantation of human hematopoietic stem cells into the mice, particularly the NSG mice, this is a, a non-obese diabetic mice uh, of complete, that's a transgenic mice model. Uh, which is the immuno complete immunodeficient mice model, which doesn't have a T cells, B cells, and natural killer cells also. So this is a recent uh, immunodeficient mice model where we, uh, after the implantation of human hematopoietic stem cells, it will develop uh, um, uh, hematopoietic stem cell lineage, particularly T cells, B cells. These cells are. Uh, 
uh, B cells are, uh, you know, the T cells, B cells, NK cells, and dendritic cells are human cells in the mouse. So what we did is we implanted the hum hematopoietic stem cells in the mouse. So that is the human source. So it will allow to grow most of these cells in the mouse as a human cells. Okay. So that by that way we can use for the investigation of human. Sir, diseases. excuse me. Yes. You can please press your screen, sir. Someone interrupted. Okay. Someone interrupted so that you represent your. You, uh, you stop stop presentation. Represent the screen. Screen. Someone interrupted. So participants, please don't use that present now option. Don't use. So can you see, sir, now? No, sir. No, no. Person now, you own second person now. Sir. Yeah, can you see now, sir? No. Yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. I'm just loading. Carry on, sir. Yeah, this is the slide I left. I don't know where I left. Yeah, by implanting human hematopoietic stem cells, which will differentiate into diverse human uh, immune cells, particularly T cells, B cells, natural killer cells into the mice, we can propagate these cells in the mice, within the mice. So by that way, we can use the mice to investigate human diseases. So that's a more appropriate model rather than this uh, previous uh, my, my mouse models. So the BLT, previously I showed here how to implant, you know, the uh, isolate and we can isolate the cells and implant into the mouse. Uh, that's the hematopoietic stem cells as well as the peripheral uh, blood leukocytes. Uh, so both cells can be implanted into the mice or injected into the IV. By that way, we can convert as a humanized mice. And the third one now I'm going to discuss about the BLT. That's bone marrow, liver, thymus tissue. Because the reason is this tissue has more T cell populations because you know T cells are differentiated or originated from thymus and some of them from liver. So uh, liver in the case of fetus, early stage. So what uh, scientists are did is they mince this tissue and they implanted into the mouse. By that way, we can generate a lot of T cells and T cell lineages. That's the overall idea of this BLT mice. So you can see uh, here the BLT mice, uh, 16 to 22 weeks of gestational age uh, fetus, they collect the, uh, um, you know, the fetus tissue. Then uh, from that, they will isolate hematopoietic stem cells. Then we can inject it into the tail vein. And uh, they develop as uh, organoids. Then these organoids are implanted into the kidney. You can see uh, this is a, a thymic of organoid. After the implantation, you can see the thymus development. Means in the kidney is developed uh, uh, the T cells more. And after that, to, uh, they confirm this via the flow cytometry. You can see this human CD8 positive T cells and human CD4 positive T cells in the mice after the implantation of this, uh, after maybe it's 16 weeks. Uh, this is the overall road map, how they come up with this um, humanized mice form. The first, you know, this non-obese diabetic model and the CB17 severe combined immunodeficiency mice model. And everyone knows this new uh, immunodeficient mice model. So they give up this and they selected this severe combined immunodeficiency model. Then they knock out several genes uh, particularly interleukin-2 uh, receptor gamma knockout gene is most frequently used with this model as a NST uh, mice development. So currently the NST and NRG mice are most uh, recent versions of this humanized mice model development. And these mice don't have T cells, B cells and natural killer cells. The reason is it doesn't, uh, you know, this already the immuno, uh, um, immune, immune system, mouse immune system has um, mutated. Then after, you know, further uh, irradiation, it will reduce the immune cell development. So why are these methods we can develop, you know, we can implant a lot of uh, immune cells into the mouse and we can investigate like for the cancer their efficacy as well as uh, induced pluripotential stem cells based immunogenicity and so on. So here the picture, oh, it shows overall uh, investigations to use this energy mice with human cells and tissues. And these uh, sections show different uh, things uh, available in this uh, energy mice uh, as well as energy. And each 
has a particular gene mutated. So you can see like uh, NOD non obese diabetic severe combined immunodeficiency, interleukin 2 receptor gamma uh, knockout mice. So like we can develop a lot of things um, by using this method and we can make it humanize the form of different strains and uh, However, uh, there is a limitation in this method. The first is if we use peripheral blood mononuclear to pass immediately xenogenic plant versus disease. So that's the And this uh, model of you know people in the human mouse models can be used only for short term investigation, not for long term investigation. For uh, long term investigation, the better method is hematopoietic cell implantation. So, this method can be used for long term investigation, such as leukemia investigations and autoimmune disorders investigations. So, in this case, uh, the T cell education is in the context of you know major histocompatibility complex H2 antigen of mouse. That's the one drawback with that. And the cytokine profiles, human cytokines are now impaired in the mouse. So that will directly impact the um, human uh, hematopoietic stem cell growth and lineage differentiation. And uh, there is, you know, since it's using human fetus tissue, there is ongoing ethical controversy in some countries also. So here I'm going to present a humanized mouse model which can be used in autoimmune disorder. Particularly, I pick up, because autoimmune disorders are very uh, broad category. You can uh, say the rheumatoid arthritis is the one, uh, the topmost one. And few people are aware about the systemic lupus erythromatous. This is the uh, very uh, you know, broad term of uh, collective autoimmune disorders happen in a female particularly. So I'm going to discuss how to develop a model uh, for a uh, humanized mouse model for this particular disease. There is not so many papers available in this area. That's just one paper uh, published by another researchers. I'm very interested about this research. So that's why I'm presenting his paper. Okay. My research area is completely different, but I want to explore in this area. So what is systemic lupus erythromatous? Systemic lupus erythromatous is a most common type of lupus disease, which is an autoimmune disorder and which impact most of the organs in the woman, particularly men too. So uh, the major uh, feature of this disease is it will produce a lot of auto antibodies, uh, uh, auto nuclear antibodies, and uh, it will deposit into the kidneys and heart and so on. It will make whatever the organs it's attacked, it will cause a different diseases. So systemic lupus erythromatous is a systemic disease it will spread the entire body and it will cause multiple organ damage and failure, finally death. There is no cure for this disease, only lifestyle management and a lot of immunosuppressive therapy, particularly you people are aware about the dexamethasone. That's also the one uh, people, uh, generally physicians recommend. So here in the case, uh, if it is affect the kidney, it will be nephritis. And if it is affect the joint, it will be arthritis. If it is affect the spleen, it will be splenomegaly, the spleen enlarge, enlargement happening. And if it is affect in the lung, it will be causing a lot of uh, pulmonary inflammation. And it also uh, known to cause a lot of neurological disorders and skin, uh, you know, the butterfly rashes and so on. So this is a, a method in that paper particularly they showed how to develop a humanized mouse model for the investigation of systemic lupus erythromatous pathogenesis what they did is they induce uh, systemic lupus erythromatous in humanized um, mouse before that i want to mention that currently a lot of people are investigated this disease using uh, the spontaneous lupus mice model which is uh, lipoproliferation mice models. There is um, two or three varieties are available uh, in Jackson laboratory and, and so on. So those are spontaneous mouse models, but it's not going to be a humanized one. So in this paper, interestingly, the researchers used the humanized mouse model. They, they took a, a NST mice strain and they induced the SLE, means systemic lupus erythromatous disease, using the pristine, this, this chemical, by injection of this chemical, mm -hmm. it will develop a systemic lupus erythromatous in this mice model. 
So you can refer further about this study in this paper, uh, which is published in uh, June 2017 by this uh, Mary uh, as a first author. Uh, so they, I, I found this paper is interesting because uh, they showed this induced model of uh, humanized uh, mouse model for systemic uh, lupus erythromatous disease investigation. So uh, what they did is they injected the chemical in humanized mouse model and they see uh, the epic, um, you know the following weeks whether the disease are over the period is developed how it is mimicking the human disease pathogenesis pattern. So after the injection they investigated the survival of uh, you know um, humanized mice with pristine which is a systemic lupus erythromatous model and this is a controlled mice which is NST mice. So you can see it's significantly uh, because of disease progress the mice uh, viability means the mice overall survival is completely declining compared to the control mice. This is humanized mice. You can see over the period of 20 weeks, the humanized mice survived very well compared to this uh, systemic lupus erythromatous uh, autoimmune disorder induced mice died very rapidly. And uh, you know, this is a survival after this, uh, you know, uh, disease uh, establishments, you can, because they want to investigate histology, so they picked up selective mice which survive, uh, you know, more than 20 weeks. From that, first uh, to show the disease is present, uh, what they did is they quantified uh, nuclear autoantibodies production, for example, the uh, double standard DNA antibodies and histone antibodies and so on. So they quantified and they showed this because of this chemical compound injection, this humanized mouse, it's developing or producing a lot of auto antibodies, which can mimic the humanized, um, the human disease, uh, particularly systemic lupus erythromatous. So you can see this is a controlled mice and this is a mice injected with a chemical compound and which produce a lot of ant auto antibodies um, and they quantified and they showed it. And furthermore, the interesting feature of uh, systemic lupus erythromatous is the establishment of lupus nephritis. Lupus nephritis, as uh, I already showed you, lupus nephritis is nothing but, you know, the glomerulus nephritis formation because of autoantibody auto deposition in the kidney that majorly causes a disease. So that's the reason they investigated whether uh, injection of this chemical compound induced uh, lupus nephritis. So you can see this is a lupus, lupus nephritis formation and the worst feature is lot of uh, immune cells migration. You can see lot of immune cell migrations to the glomerulus of the kidney in the lupus patients as well as the humanized mice. You can see here and this is a control mice which is comparatively less uh, compared to this pristine induced mice model. And they also, uh, you know, quantified um, number of, you know, the main glomerular size because the glomerular size, because of this inflammatory cells migrations, it's a significantly enlarged compared to the control humanized mice. And they also showed here because this lot of immunoglobins deposition in the glomerulus, uh, glomer glomerulus of kidney. So you can see a lot of things have happened in this uh, chemical compound injection, uh, which means induced mouse model. And another feature is proteinuria. This is commonly, uh, you know, uh, seen uh, in the patients. So you can, same thing you can um, uh, see in this mouse model, the chemical compound inject model, it shows proteinuria, which means a lot of proteins are eliminated in the urine of mice, uh, compared to the how um, control humanized mice model. And in other thing, they investigated uh, pulmonary, uh, you know, inflammation by doing the sections. So you can see this is uh, pristine injected and you can see a lot of uh, in, uh, infiltration of um, like immune cells to the lung compared to this control mice. And another one feature is lymphopenia. Lymphopenia is the term where uh, lymphocytes, the fast decrease of lymphocytes in the blood, particularly these things happen in the systemic lupus, erythromatous, autoimmune disorder patients. So they try to observe if the disease is established because of, uh, because of the injection of this chemical compound. So what they did is they kind of compare the control mice, uh, humanized, you know, CD45 cells and uh, 
they compare with this chemical compound injected mice uh, CD45 cells count. So they found that you know because of this disease progress, it's the CD45 cells counts are significantly reduced. That's the indication of disease uh, progression. And you know you can see compared to this control uh, that over the period because of disease progress, you can see these now T cells are completely decreased. It's mostly decreased and natural killer cells which is uh, humanized uh, CD56 natural killer cells because of the HSC implantation in the mouse model. So you can see here, this is a controlled uh, humanized mice. This is pristine injected uh, humanized mice. And you can see the um, pristine injected humanized mice shows decrease in the natural killer cells as well as B cells. So overall in the paper, what they showed is uh, we can establish a human, this is, for example, if you see here, you will come come to know exactly what they did is. So first they did uh, this model, humanized SRC, means the hematopoietic stem cells implant into the pubs, and they develop an NSG humanized mouse. Then after they injected a pristine uh, as a chemical compound to induce systemic lupus erythromatous and they showed that injection of SLE into the humanized mice, we can mimic the pathogenesis of systemic lupus erythromatous. So uh, in the previous lab where I did my postdoc with Stanford, my professor, he's also investigated, uh, you know, uh, a lot of humanized mice models in cancer molecular imaging. So I am going to show one example of the application of humanized mouse model in cancer spreading as well as cancer therapy monitoring. So here, what he did is he tried to show this molecular imaging of immune checkpoint blockade uh, in humanized mouse model of triple negative breast cancer because the reason is triple negative breast cancer won't respond to most of currently available therapy because most of currently available therapies are uh, particularly meant for uh, hormone sensitive cancers, breast cancers. But these are something you know, it won't express uh, any receptors like EGFR and so on. So this, that's why it's called triple negative breast cancer. And you know, it's usually tend to metastasis to the lung. So the overall idea is you aim is to show the lung metastasis of uh, triple negative breast cancer in this mice. So you can see. Uh, before that, what he did is the MDA MB231. This is a cancer cell, triple negative breast cancer cell. So he first he engineered the induced red fluorescence protein um, luciferase to image the cell migrations to the lung. So first he established lung metastasis by injecting the cells in day one. And you can see um, after that he converted the mice by injecting you know the uh, peripheral blood mono nuclear cells. And then he treated with the currently available clinically used antibodies, PD-1, PD-L1 blocker antibody. So using this, what he's trying to show is the therapeutic efficacy of this antibody, you can see here, compared to this control groups. So you can see in the humanized mice model, the cancers are, you know, it, it metastasis to the lung, but because of treatment of this monoclonal antibody, particularly uh, which will block the uh, T cell recognitions in the cancer cells, so so that uh, you know ultimately it will enhance the recognition of T cells, but thereby reduce the cancer cell growth in the lung. So you can see here, but you know after the 20 days we cannot control this cancer cell growth in the lung, so it's it's spread out ultimately, which means the therapeutic need to be you know still um, investigated. So this is a one example I would like to show that. Um, we can use the humanized mouse models uh, for the investigation of cancer therapy. Uh, that's the uh, my, my you know overall presentation related to um, humanized mouse models. Then uh, I'm I'm switching move uh, switching to cell mimetics, which is uh, uh, my major area of research. What I'm doing is uh, I used to take most of cells and peel off the membrane and coat the nanoparticle surface, which make cell membrane coated nanoparticles. This is completely different from humanized mice model development. So these are nanocarrier development for the drug and therapeutics delivery for the treatment of diverse diseases, including cancer and cardiac diseases and you know brain disorders. 
so here i am providing some of the examples uh, some people use you know the hematopoietic stem cells membrane to coat the synthetic plj nanoparticles and bone marrow derived stem cells to coat the plj nanoparticles so so far various people use these cell membranes to coat the nanoparticles for the treatment of therapy what happen you know when you coat for example here what i did is uh, this is uh, my paper i published in 2018 i engineered the stem cells then after i peel up the membrane then i coat the plj nanoparticle which previously loaded with the drug so the major advantage of this uh, stem cell mimicking nano carrier is stem cell used to go and home in the disease wherever disease is in the uh, in the body it will go and home and differentiate into that disease to cell that's the uh, major properties of stem cells so we use that pattern and we coat this stem cell membranes to the nano carrier and see whether it goes and go goes and home to the uh, disease tissue so what we did is we establish hindlip ischemia model here you can see the mice hindlip is uh, ischemic and because of ischemic it loses the um, um, it's one of the limb so in this model we injected our particle you can see uh, after the injection it goes you know most uh, of things are taken by the liver and spleen however some particles goes to the um, disease to tissue this is the advantage of cell membrane mimicking uh, nano particles so we also used with this cancer cell membrane coated particle since the reason is cancer cell metastasis for example one cancer it started originated in breast and it can migrate to the brain and cause a brain metastasis and second cancer cells it will split from the uh, primary tumor and it will metastasis to the brain that's the the basic mechanism behind this migration is homologous uh, adhesions the reason is cancer cells has most of uh, receptors and proteins which recognize the co or fellow cancer cells so we use this pattern and we coat uh, the cancer cells to the nanoparticle and we expected it will go and bind to the cancer so these results you know we published in acs nano uh, in 2018 so what we did is we cultured triple negative breast cancers and we isolated extracellular vesicles from that and we labeled with imaging agent uh, and we coat the nanoparticle and we injected into the mice uh, which is um, you know nude mice so we established the cancer pre established breast cancer here which is a subcutaneous uh, breast cancer so we injected the nanoparticles you can see it goes on the day one to the liver and spleen followed by these nanoparticles are slowly migrated to the cancer where you can see on the day 12 you can see there a lot of nanoparticles are migrated to the tumor hello can you see my screen interrupt sir sorry you present it again screen somebody interrupt participants please do not uh, use the present now option because that you when you use that it will interrupt the presentation so can you see now yeah yeah yeah, yeah. carry on sir carry on please. yes uh, so this is one example we, uh, in the mice model we can establish a cancer and uh, we can use the cell membrane coated nanoparticles and via molecular imaging we can monitor the nanoparticles homing to the tumor and disease therapy and so on uh then after we use the same pattern to deliver the an uh, antibiotics to the macrophages because uh when cell uh so every cell has a programmed death uh, pattern it has a programmed death uh, program after particular time the cells will die and produce apoptotic bodies these apoptotic bodies are recognized by the macrophages based on the specific membrane protein and these macrophages particularly eat those eat those apoptotic bodies and you know digest so we use sir, this to make full view sir ppt okay. full view yes okay so we use this uh, natural phenomena which means the apoptotic cells can be recognized by the macrophages and it will it can be eaten by the macrophages 
okay uh, so we use this natural phenomena the to get this natural phenomena we you, we applied this nano system for the treatment of intracellular bacterial infection this is some some kind of interesting story behind this because everyone knows about staphylococcus aureus infections that is a um, methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus infection is the most feared bacteria uh, in the hospital environment because these bacteria cause highly hospital acquired infections in most of hospitals okay so the major uh, problem is these bacteria cannot killed by currently available most of antibiotics cyclosporine or penicillin it won't work against those bacteria the only uh, antibiotic currently work or therapeutically efficacy is, uh, is vancomycin however vancomycin cannot penetrate in into the cells very low amount of drug only can penetrate into the cell uh, everyone knows about the tuberculosis um, you know tuberculosis is how difficult to treat the reason is the mycobacterium tuberculosis is a, a facultative bacteria which home to the macrophages and it will be survive for a long time it, the macrophages cannot kill those bacteria so these bacteria use macrophages as a host for the long term survivability after some time this ba bacteria you know kill the macrophages and cause uh, tuberculosis so the same pattern staphylococcus aureus also use the macrophages and it will survive within the cell Uh, macrophages and wherever macrophages goes and that organ it will cause a disease particularly septicemia and so on so we we previously you know observed this phenomena that apoptotic cells can be recognized by the macrophages and these apoptotic bodies can go into the macrophages so this is the basic phenomena of this study and we use this natural phenomena to kill the intracellular bacteria so we demonstrated this study in this paper and you can see here so what we did is we culture the cancer cells the reason is we are you know previously worked in cancer cells and um, it's particularly um, the treatment is highly required for brain cancer uh, patients who's undergone surgery frequently to the hospitals and they exposed to the bacteria and these bacteria goes and home to the cancer cells within the cancer cells so the treatment Uh, of the cancer patients is highly difficult so most of cancer patients won't die because of cancer because of this bacterial infection they quickly die so that's the reason we use the cancer cells and we generate apoptotic bodies then we load uh, the antibiotic vancomycin and they we produce you know um, apoptotic bodies reconstructed apoptotic bodies mimicking nano vesicles which encapsulated uh, antibiotic with them and these vesicles signal the macrophages to eat it that's why it's called eat me signaling um, nano vesicles so to prove this concepts first we culture the macrophages uh, the raw cells to 4 7 and we are uh, infected with the staphylococcus aureus into this macrophages and you can see this macrophages can survive within the uh, these staphylococcus aureus can survive within the macrophages and after the treatment this uh, bacteria is efficiently killed by our nano carrier so you can see this is a confocal microscopy and um, you can see wherever the green color these are staphylococcus aureus bacteria surviving within the macrophages cell line and the red uh, signals are from dead bacteria because we used a live and dead staining and you can see the green ones are surviving the red ones are dead bacteria because of our treatment we used the you know different cancer cells and we developed different um nano carrier for the delivery of antibiotics so uh, this confocal microscopy uh, image is clearly shows inside dead bacteria as well as the live bacteria within the macrophages and uh, here also you can see so these are the dead bacteria because of our treatment and uh, the same thing we proved with the cancer cells particularly glioblastoma multiforum it's a aggressive brain cancer there is no therapy only one drug available uh, that is a temozolomide um, after temozolomide um, you know surgical therapy and radiations and so on is the other options available for these patients so mostly these patients goes for surgery to the hospitals where they acquire the infection of staphylococcus aureus 
and we are the one first to prove that these staphylococcus aureus can home to the cancer cells and establish you know uh, um, uh, intracellular infections and we used our nanocarrier to you know uh, prove that these cancer cells can be, cancer cell derived apoptotic bodies can be used to deliver the antibiotic into the cancer cells so uh, these experiments are performed by one of my co researcher uh, his micro uh, nagendran he's from brown university so he did most of cell culture experiments and i developed most of this nano carriers and these are again the confocal microscopy shows uh, the bacterial uh, survival within the cancer cells and uh, this is the confocal microscopy shows this uh, dead bacteria within the cancer cells so after this we used the you know as i said the new mice which is a immunodeficient mice but it certain immune cells functions are you know uh, mutated and uh, the immunocompetent mice which is c657 uh, black mice so we injected our nano carrier how this nano carrier bio distribution within the mice model so we can see most of things are goes and it's eaten by the spleen and liver where the macrophages are there and uh, here in the immunocompetent mice you can clearly see it goes to the spleen and this is a photoacoustic imaging since we incorporated imaging agent we can see uh, within the mice where exactly this compounds are uh, you know presented uh we further we also developed this other nano platform which can deliver the uh, gene or drug to the brain cancer so first we showed uh, using our engineered cancer cell model we can show that there is a formation of brain cancer in the mice model so for this first we implanted a uh, glioblastoma tumor in the mice you can see in the day 0 there is no cancer cell growth but day 12 you can see uh, that there is a big cancer in the mice egg okay then after we injected our nano carrier and we can monitor via the optical imaging where this our nano carriers are going to the tumor or not you can see because you know uh, if mice and human has a blood brain barrier which won't allow the nano carrier to cross uh, uh, you know a blood brain barrier and reach to the brain so you can see a lot of nano carriers are reached but you know however most of nano carriers are eaten by the liver and lung and is eliminated however significant amount of uh, nano carriers closely um, 8 to 10 percentage of nano carriers are reaches to the brain which is highly significant in current therapy model and you can see organ based distributions and you can see the signals in the brain and we also did you know uh, the microRNA Uh, based distribution and you can see the most of uh, things goes to the liver uh, spleen lung and after all uh, certain things goes to the brain so my colleague also developed another nano carrier um, he conjugated microRNAs and he deliver most to brain area because mostly uh, for the therapy of systemic disease people used to deliver a uh, tail vein injection but he demonstrated via nose we can deliver a lot of materials to the brain this nose to brain is a direct form this is the one way now coronavirus also if it, it, it's infected here and it goes and cause you know stroke and other diseases this is a common route of most of pathogens uh, spread to the brain so the nose to brain route he mimics the pattern and he delivers the nanoparticles to the nose and you know he demonstrated these nanoparticles can reach the brain so here you can see first we established the brain cancer and he showed that this is a brain cancer present in the mouse then after he injected via nose he can see a lot of signals in the brain tumor not other organ so uh, the nose to the brain um, at the route of administration is very effective compared to this iv that is for all uh, his aim in this paper so he published this paper in uh, 2019 um uh, we also developed you know other uh, nano carriers which loaded with a uh, lot of microRNAs and uh, we established subcutaneous cancer model and we you know we injected and we showed this cancer can spread to the lung uh, which is lung metastasis and by a nano carrier we can reduce the cancer burden or we can use this cancer as a therapy uh, we can use this nano carrier as a therapy sorry okay we also further uh, you know scale up or make the pilot study we injected nano carriers uh, to the pig and we demonstrated we can use these nano carriers as a therapy 
for the hepatocellular carcinoma which is a liver cancer so what we did is we mix micro bubbles and nano carrier here and injected into the pig and it goes to the uh, pig liver where we can apply the ultrasound and burst the micro bubble and release the nano particle to the particular leaf so in the present lab uh, uh, where i am associated with professor jason mccarthy and uh, professor maria kanraites she is a director of our institute and he is my current pi who is associate professor in cardiovascular medicine the mmri is uh, presently working um, mostly on biomedical engineering field and they are very uh, well established institute in the cardiovascular research so uh, what they are doing is they are um, here they have a human induced pluripotent system cell so i am collecting from them um, vesicles and i used to process this uh, and code the particles and make up, you know human induced pluripotent system cell mimicking nano carriers so uh, my pi lab in the present lab we are expertise in uh, molecular imaging where we can see a uh, lot of cardiovascular and other disease uh, before you know when it is onset when it is started the disease is started and it is progress uh, this is a beautiful image it's it's uh, you know 100% effort by my professor and other people not mine so they showed uh, you know the uh, cardiac disease model and they also showed this um, you know atherosclerosis and other things so in his lab we are developing a lot of nano medicines for the imaging and targeted therapy um, particularly we use you know plg plg based based nano carriers where we can load the drugs and our genes and we can deliver in a targeted manner so uh, in in addition my uh, you know my director um, she is very expert in cell signaling and molecular pharmacology area so both people are guiding me to uh, you know working on this autoimmune disorders area and other so she is a um, key player in um, lupus uh, disease therapy so she is uh, previously worked on um, autoimmune disorders cell signaling area particularly the shp2 positive cell signaling area so this are uh, our uh, current lab website so where you can go to the career section or you can find a job related information frequently they used to post uh, some kind of jobs recently also they recruited um, you know the veterinarian uh, uh, assistant some other job so which is most suitable for uh, zoology department in addition if somebody is are eager to find job in us please goes to i recommend goes to indeed.com where you can find um, so many jobs there Uh, you need all you need to do is just enter your job of interest and your interested location in us and you can find lot of job posting in this area in addition um here those people those people did uh, m uh, bachelor in um, you know in india they want to come for their master but due to cost factor or financial factor they are unable to come over us so there is a lot of small colleges small uh, universities uh, in us particularly the state university system so those universities they will provide a scholarship uh, all you need to do is first you need to secure your toefl or english uh, language test then after you must apply uh, this application process everything will cost uh, less than 5000 or something like uh, 10 to 20000 not more than that then after you can depend on some bank for the financial support to get the admission and come here to do your studies like a year then you will find a job for 3 years and you can go back to your country so try to uh, you know go through most of state universities and community colleges available in uh, us so this is some examples of community colleges located nearby my area so you can see uh, these community colleges fees are very cheap which will be easily covered from your bank loan you no need to pay from your packet so at the end uh, i would like to thank uh, my entire professors and my colleagues so uh, the present professor professor jason mccarthy and our director professor maria kanraites and my previous professor professor ramaswamy palmurugan and uh, um, the department of radiology chief uh, professor sam gambe and my phd supervisor professor suhang lee and professor hansu park and my team uh, dr muttu dr khan and uh, graduate students and uh, chase he's our instructor in our lab he's very expert in animal models so he's helping me to you know to learn more and more on this uh, animal related techniques 
thanks uh, the organizing committees professor maria pen professor ravi kumar in uh, you know sarboji college to everyone thank you so much for this opportunity dr jagadish yes sir thank you for a very nice uh, presentation uh, with the recent publications uh, 2020 publications in molecular uh, immunology we had a uh, uh, nano and nano science and other thing so now i invite the participants uh, to un unmute yourself you can ask question now i invite the participants to ask question Uh, is uh, let the let the participants to interact with you. Uh, before that, uh, in the meantime, I would like to um, ask the questions posted by during the posted by the participants uh, during the during your lecture. So there are four or five questions. So in yes. between, I'll ask that uh, you please answer them. What? Huh? Yeah, no problem, sir. Go ahead. Um, so somebody asked about the uh, cell coating method with nanoparticle. i think uh, uh explain the cell coating method with nanoparticles yes sir so it is asked by uh, one of the participants sundaramurthy okay he is from okay so uh let me show you how it is so yeah uh, you know uh, in our blood it has a red blood cell a simple form i can explain the red blood cell can be uh, you know let by uh, you know centrifugation or simple centrifugation uh, like uh, um, 1000 rpm or 800 g equals we can pellet the rbc and we can separate no need to worry sir you person person uh, we can uh, separate the cells then after uh, you know cells are should be uh, in isotonic medium the salt concentration in the uh, you know cell suspending medium should be isotonic so if we use either hypotonic or hypertonic the cell will burst and release its intracellular content so then after we use you know a lot of purification steps like centrifugation steps we can separate the cell membranes out of its intracellular content so we can just you know remove the shirt from someone person so like so we just remove the cell membranes then we prepare the nanoparticles whatever drug of your interest or gene of your interest and then we can coat via physical extrusions those who are familiar with liposome preparations they know the extru extrusions extrusions are nothing but just you know uh, the membranes um, polyether uh, sulfonate membranes are there it has a small tiny holes like 0.2 micron which means 200 nanometer or 100 nanometer you even we can buy 50 nanometer so within that narrow pore size if you pass through the nanoparticle and cell membrane it will break it and it will reassemble it because the basic phenomena of lipid the nature of lipid is it will self assemble on the hydrophobic surface or hydrophilic surface so that's the key uh, principle applied in this cell membrane coating technology yeah thank you sir um, the another question uh, another question raised by the Uh, Meena Kumari, a participant. Whether the Staphylococcus aureus is useful in uh, only the Staphylococcus aureus is useful in cancer treatment, or other microbes microbes can also be used. Ah, uh, we can use uh, all the uh, you know microbes, but the you know each antibiotic is specifically uh, effective against a particular microorganism. You know bacteria, the the uh, antibiotic, the mechanism of action of each antibiotic is. it will either either it will uh, bind to the bacterial membrane and you know burst the bacterial membrane and kill the bacteria some of the uh, antibiotics will go into the bacteria and it will uh, neutralize it so you know uh, if we plan to use other microorganisms then you must to choose the antibiotic not uh, you know um, other antibiotic so you cannot use a single antibiotic for all the bacteria we we need we must to choose the specific antibiotics to kill the desired bacteria of interest uh, hello hi yes uh, yeah. hello uh, the, uh, yes yes you yes. please ask sir uh, another question sir. someone someone uh, sir, uh, sir please uh, participant time yeah, yes sir go ahead uh, sir 
Uh, yeah. This is Dr. Manigandan from JJ College. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I have a query. As Corona is rapidly spreading in US, USA, yes. is there any nano carrier research is going on against COVID-19 in your uh, location or in your yes, area, sir. university? Yeah, I can answer this. Uh, not in uh, my research. My research institute, is, you know, they are basically uh, the testing center, uh, but the community testing center, and they are offered a lot of research-based support to the community, my research center. Particularly, uh, you know, we recently submitted one uh, um, research summary. Uh, we uh, give a hy our hypothesis that this coronavirus can cause cardiovascular comorbid, um, cardiovascular direct infections. By the way, patients quickly die. Within three days or four days, patients can die. So because physicians not aware that uh, most of physicians think that, OK, this back, uh, coronavirus can enter to the lung and it caused you know cyto uh, cytokine storms by that that's the reason most of patients are dying but we are the one first to be uh, we hypothesis that this uh, uh, coronavirus can go and bind to the heart particularly where the ac2 inhibitors are expressed so that place it can cause myocarditis viral myocarditis my, viral myocarditis and thereby the patients dying because of that infection so this is um, um, you know unexplored area currently. Well, now uh, my research institute and other institutes are currently they have started working on these investigations. And in addition, uh, you know we also uh, give our hypothesis and our opinion on hand sanitizer formulation that published in MDPA journal uh, last week and so. And uh, to answer specifically to your questions. So you asked, uh, is there possible to application of nano carrier in the coronavirus therapy? Yes, uh, the the entire world is believing nano carrier. Uh, I would say most of people they are do not know the application of nano carriers in uh, viral therapy because um, the first vaccine um, they reported uh, against uh, coronavirus is Moderna therapeutics in US. So they used the um, nano carrier as a uh, method of uh, deliver the mRNA um, to for the uh, um, you know vaccine development. So there is the application of vaccine in the coronavirus. That's the one way means in the vaccine development. Presently, hundreds of companies are you know uh, interested in vaccine development, which hopefully uh, come out of this September or maybe next year we will get a vaccine. That's the one thing. And another thing is a lot of people are trying to neutralize the. Uh, you know, virus by binding, um, uh, you know, particularly silver nanocarriers and other nanocarriers can be naturally effective against viral infections. So some people are investigating those mechanisms also. There is definitely a lot of nanocarrier mediated research is going on, but it takes time to come to the market. Yeah, yes. Thank you, sir. Another yeah, question. Uh, sir, in, in the case of nano carriers, yes. you have tried for cancer cells and uh, uh, you made it successful. Yes. Any possibility of treating against uh, HIV infection, sir? Yes. Uh, By using nano carriers? Yes, sir. Uh, the HIV infections, the papers are already, literatures are available. Uh, the, there is one professor uh, from Israel, Israel University. She developed a reconstructed nano carrier. Um, I can, if you send me an email or something, uh, I can give you the literature's details. So she already developed the you know, stem cell based nano carriers for this um, viral uh, neutralization and HIV therapy. But it's not, you know, highly effective. Uh, almost 35 years, people are, the scientists are trying to find a vaccine uh, against HIV. It's not working. And, uh, you know, trying to find a therapeutics, it's not. Uh, highly epi um, effective. So, but you know, we can enhance the life expectancy of uh, HIV infection infected patients uh, by you know antiviral therapy, antiretroviral therapy. So that's currently uh, you know um, using in the clinic. Okay, sir. Thank you very much for the informative session. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. Hello, sir. Yes. Yeah, sir. Another question raised by the. Uh, participant Dr. Babu, uh, mm -hmm. he is asking how far we can reduce the time of drug discovery by using the humanized mouse model. 
Um, yes, sir. Uh, there is one example. I think I think CD28, the monoclonal antibody development, currently it makes faster. The main reason is you know the, the current drug discovery and the clinical translation. It takes literally 14 years um, minimum. If you want to get a US FDA approval, you should uh, first you know it, there is a lot of procedure is there like filing IND and then after you know move to phase one, phase two, phase three. Then after um, phase two, we may be you know it, it may be a promising one. But um, as we said, uh, using the humanized mice model, which can evolve, because in the mice, what people are investigating is uh, the proof of concepts one and the mechanism of action two, and the third one is uh, safety, safety of the materials. Because most of small molecule drugs are the current nano carriers and so on. These are synthetic versions. So we do not know if we inject these things directly to the humans, what it happened. It, does it cause any diseases and so on. So first we can give these things to the mice. So followed by they will give to the you know non-human uh, primates, particularly monkey and so on. Then after they will try, you know test in the phase one human studies. So the, if you use humanized mice models, it will mitigate other further things because. The immune system in the mice, it mostly mimic the immune system in the human body. So we can easily predict and evaluate of uh, small molecules as well as the synthetic carriers uh, effect in human, what it's going to be. So we can give a, oh, some, somehow some, we can come out of uh, conclusions out of this investigation. So humanized mice models are, you know, the best models to investigate any material immunogenicity, particularly the induced pluripotent stem cells therapy, uh, currently investigated, uh, you know, throughout the world. So these humanized mice models are best models uh, to investigate the immunogenicity, and uh, if does it cause this cell therapy, any cancer, and so on. Those kind of questions can be answered by uh, these humanized mice models. Yeah, thanks, sir. Uh, another one more question raised by the participant Reka. Uh, yes. Whether the probiotic can uh, control the Staphylococcus aureus? Yes, sir. Uh, because uh, that's a big area. Even I, I, I found one interesting documentary uh, in Netflix, uh, Parasites, and they showed uh, about the how, what is the importance of probiotics, particularly the bacteria, the good bacteria. So after that, even uh, I did some products early my, during my industrial career for probiotics development and marketing. And um, presently, even my friend, uh, 11 l also, Dr. 11 l is working on probiotics. So uh, these are good bacteria, but we do not know uh, whether these bacteria are effective um, or not. We need to study, investigate further to conclude anything. Uh, thanks, sir, for uh, our uh, nice presentation and um, uh, patient uh, interaction with the participants. So now yes. it is the uh, time uh, for a formal word of thanks uh, given by uh, will be given by our uh, one of our uh, organizer, Dr. P. Murugayan. Okay, sir. Good evening, all. First of all, thanks to our principal and actually uh, of um, Dr. Mari Pan for the supporting of webinar and second thing um, I very appreciate uh, Dr. J.C. Post uh, for your uh, nice presentation and uh, uh, staff members and uh, all participants thanks to all once again thanks to all so that the final Session of that webinar will be conducted tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So participants, I request you to join before 10 minutes of the start of the tomorrow function uh, webinar, that is 10.50. Uh, on behalf of the uh, college and the department and my own, uh, I personally thank Dr. Jagadish Sandra Bose for taking much pain to uh, have, give you a, uh, give you a what is that uh, important lecture on the molecular aspect of that uh, autoimmune disorder? I thank you, sir, again. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.